In this video, I'll be reacting to uh, something on Canada. <laughs> I'm a Canadian peep, so you all doing out there. Anyway, this one is called the Canadian Legacy. Reaching the stars with Canada's helping hand. You know, it'll be interesting to see what part they play in uh, studying the stars, you know, space programs and stuff like that. Because normally you hear about the two major powers, Russia and America, they're the ones who are space exploration without thinking about the contribution of everybody else in there. So let's go in there and see what this is all about. Welcome to Mr. Giant Reacts and Ting and Ting and Ting. Let's go ahead on YouTube and Sim Simmer and see what this video here is all about, all right? Look up. No, 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 like way up. <laughs> A little bit further. Can you even see it? Right now, some 408 kilometers over our heads, the International Space Station is being whipped at 28,000 kilometers an hour in circles around the Earth, carrying a permanent human presence in space since the year 2000. The ISS was designed and built in partnership with five space agencies from around the world. NASA in the United States, Roscosmos from Russia, JAXA from Japan, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. Each no, I'm going to stop it right there. I did not know that. I just thought it was America and Russia. And I'll be dumb right on it. You see, this is why I react to these videos, because I learn something new every day. Japan is involved. I don't know that. I definitely didn't know Canada was involved. You know what I mean? Now, I live in America, so whenever I hear people talk about, uh, about it here in America, you think America did it all. That's crazy, ain't it? And instead of saying, well, this person helped and that person helped, you just let the people believe they did it all, which, le which leads to that nationalistic stuff, which makes them think that everybody else owed them something. Because they're the leaders in it, you know what I mean? Granted, they have the money to do it, you know what I mean, and all of that. But without the ground workers and the, 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 the people doing a lot of the technology stuff, it wouldn't be able to be, they wouldn't be able to do it. Let's keep going here. Building and bringing up different modules until the last livable module was brought up and attached in 2011. The United States, Russia, Japan, and the European Union all brought up different modules for the station but it was the Canadian contribution that played a significant role in putting the whole thing together. And no, I'm unfortunately not talking about the heartwarming sing-alongs from Canadian astronaut Chris Hatfield. We're talking about Canada's most famous robotic and technological achievement, a program of historic proportions lovingly dubbed the Canadarm. In the 1980s, the National Aeronautics Space Administration from the United States was building its reusable space shuttle program and invited Canada to have a seat at the table marking the start of a long and close relationship between Canada and NASA. These shuttles were going to be used to launch and repair satellites while in space, and they needed the flexibility to allow astronauts to get really close to orbiting satellites to make some of those repairs. The shuttles needed to have something that would literally reach out to grab the satellites, hold them in place while astronauts did their repairs, and then throw them back into their orbit once they were finished. Canada would be tasked with designing a tool from scratch that would work flawlessly in space with the dexterity of an actual human arm. And the Canadarm program was created. In order to withstand the harsh environments of space, the Canadarm would need some of the most advanced aerospace materials available, including titanium, stainless steel, and graphite epoxy. It would be insulated with a blanket of thermostatically controlled heaters to make sure that the inside temperature stayed safe. With nerves made of copper wire, bones made of graphite fiber, and muscles made of electric motors, the Canadarm is truly like a human arm. The arm is permanently fixed by one end to the shuttle vehicle, and it has two joints in the shoulder, one in the elbow, and three in the wrist, just like an actual human arm. The very first Canadarm was launched on November 13, 1981, as a part of the STS-2 mission on the Space Shuttle Columbia. Once the bay doors open in space, the arm stretches 15 meters out. It's able to lift up to 30,000 kilograms on Earth, which is the equivalent of a fully loaded school bus, which then multiplies up to 266,000 kilograms of weight wow. in the business of space, all with the same amount of electricity it would take to boil a kettle of water. The first launch on Columbia was an incredible success. Dr. Gary Lindbergh, the first program manager for the Canadarm program, said that that first image returned back to Earth, 
the now famous inverted V with the Canadian word mark displayed for the world to see. Canadian technology at its best. It was happiness, relief, and excitement all at once. The first Canadarm cost the government of Canada $108 million to design, build, and test the arm before they just gave it to NASA for the Columbia mission. However, NASA would go on to buy four more arms from Canada, one for Discovery, Challenger, Endeavour, and Atlantis, which resulted in over $700 million in sales for the program and another $20 million every single year in maintenance and support. The first, and arguably the most famous iteration of the Canadarm program, retired alongside the remaining of the Space Shuttle vehicles in 2011. One example of the Canadarm, the one that used to belong to Endeavour, is on display at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum in Ottawa, while Atlantis and Discovery still have their arms. However, the retirement of the Space Shuttle and the end of the first Canadarm program is not the end of this story. Canadarm 2, which is officially known as the Space Station Remote Manipulator System, is the second iteration of the Canadarm program, which launched in 2001, and it's the only one that's still currently in operation today. Canadarm 2 is an important part of the contribution that Canada made to the International Space Station project. This arm, which was 17 meters long, was extensively used in putting the space station together. It would reach out and grab new modules from the delivering space shuttle, and it would attach it to where it needed to go on the space station. Canadarm 2 has two identical hands on both sides of the arm. These can latch on to different anchor points around the space station, or can do cosmic catches and grab onto things that are floating by. The arm has an ability to walk over itself, crawling end over end connecting to different anchor points, or it can be connected to the mobile servicing system, which is a 108 meter long truss system that runs the entire length of the space station, specifically designed to hold the cannon arm. The arm can be controlled inside the station from a resident astronaut or remotely from a CSA office in Nongai. And since the station was completed in 2011, it serves as an important repair tool, it can grab incoming spaceships, and it can safely hold spacewalking astronauts so that they can complete repairs on the wow. inside. However, Canadarm 2 is most efficient when it's coupled with Canada's other contribution to the space station, Dexter also known as the Special Purpose Dexterous Manipulator, sometimes just called the Canada Hand. Dexter is a humanoid-looking two-arm robot that is able to do some of the very complicated repairs on the outside of the station that otherwise would require an astronaut to go outside. Dexter was launched in 2008 and has since become an incredibly wow. important part of the space station team. Unlike the... No, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen. The things we can accomplish if we work together. I mean, I'm not big into the space program and stuff. I don't know a whole lot about it. But that also shows when people work together, they could do stuff. Can you imagine how much we could do to better mankind if we just work together and stop letting greed take a hold of us? Look there. Four different entities come together to figure this out, Canada being one of them. I'm going to have to look at the video to see what Japan and Russia and all their contribution was. Because you know, that's what this channel is about, man. This channel is about, hey, listen, there are things if we work together, we could accomplish. And that's like one of the most cliche statements, but it's in practice every single day. Every day. Let's keep going here. Dexter is entirely controlled from the ground in either Quebec or Houston and is designed to work independently of any of the resident astronauts inside the station. After launching in 2008, Dexter woke up for the first time after being connected to Canadarm 2 on March 14th of that year. Two days later, spacewalking astronauts connected Dexter's two arms and they would spend the next year doing various tests on the system. Dexter's very first autonomous role was to unpack some pieces from the Japanese resupply ship Kunatori 2 while the astronauts on board were still sleeping. Dexter is incredibly tricked out. He's got high definition color TV cameras on all arms, an area to stow different pieces, a tool holster with every tool that you would possibly need to work on the space station. In 2011, more tools were added, including a wire cutter, a safety cap remover tool, and a multifunctional wow. with several different adapters. 
CanadaArm2 and Dexter continue to circle the Earth on board the station and provide some of the most critical services to the space station. You know, people people always tell me when uh, I, I'm a little bit critical of uh, going blasting up into space and all of that, but people always tell me that uh, a lot of the stuff they they invented or created to do the space program is also helping us on Earth. Dexter <laughs> is proven that you could replace grocery store workers with robots. <laughs> Bright side, other side. Man. Being able to repair things while hurtling thousands of kilometers an hour through depths of space. But again, these are not the end of the Canadarm story. The Canadian Space Agency is currently working on two new projects, Canadarm 3 and the Next Generation Canadarm. The Next Generation Canadarm, or NGC, is actually a program with four parts. First, you have a 15 meter long Canadarm that's designed to fit into smaller spacecraft, like the Boeing Starliner or SpaceX's Dragon rockets. It's designed to fold down into a box that's no more than five square meters in order to minimize the space used on board. Second, that arm can be coupled with a 2.5 meter long mini Dexter that can complete very complicated repairs to both satellites and spacecraft while in space. Third, the Canadian Space Agency is working on a mini Canadarm that can be used to dock two spacecraft together while in space. And last, a missions control center to control all three of those arms and to give astronauts an opportunity to practice bringing spaceships together in close contact. You know what that's doing too with all the uh, Canadarm and all of that and the modifications and the new ones coming up? Able to... Uh, service smaller uh, spacecrafts and stuff that means we're getting closer and closer to commercial flights out there to chill uh, you know what i mean on a mass scale because you know we human beings like to mass produce stuff if there's money gonna come involved you understand what i mean so wow the writing's on the wall i guess huh Flexible services will be critical for the future of operations in space, which currently are being launched by private rockets in the United States. So it's very likely that we'll see these next generation Canadarms taking flight on SpaceX, Boeing, or Virgin vehicles, and they'll likely be rented out to these companies and to global space agencies for individual missions in the future. Maybe the most exciting advancement in robotic space arm technology is actually Canadarm 3, an artificial intelligence based robotic system that will stay permanently in space on board the Lunar Gateway. With the United States planning on returning man and bringing the first woman to the moon by 2024, NASA is currently planning the construction of the Lunar Gateway Station, which is a small station that will actually orbit the moon and serve as a waypoint for regular human travel to the surface of the moon. The gateway will be one fifth of the size of the International Space Station, and it will serve as a scientific laboratory, a rendezvous point for missions going to the moon, a control center for permanent operations on the moon, and eventually an important resting stop for voyages towards Mars. Canadarm 3 will be able to walk around the outside of the Lunar Gateway just like Canadarm 2 does on ISS. It will maintain and repair the Gateway, capture visiting spacecraft, move various modules around, and assist astronauts in completing spacewalks. However, Canadarm 3 will be trained to do a lot of this work and these repairs completely on its own, because the Gateway will not always be crewed, and the delay in communication between the Earth and the Gateway caused by it going around the backside of the Moon would make direct communication with the Earth nearly impossible. The arm will be fitted with a 3D vision sensor tool and six 360 degree 4K quality cameras that will give the arm the ability to see what it's doing and to map the area around it. And brand new but highly sensitive sensors will be added to the arm giving it a sense of touch, something that no other Canadarm in the past has had. And, unique to Canadarm 3, it's going to have the ability to break itself down into smaller pieces so that it can be brought inside the Lunar Gateway Station for repairs. Canada is working hard with our international partners to help bring humans back to the moon, and Canadarm 3 continues to push the limits of what we thought was technically impossible. From 1981 to the moon, the Canadarm legacy is a testament to Canadian curiosity, capacity, and ingenuity. The Lunar Gateway will be the next major international collaboration in human space travel, and Canada continues to be a cherished and welcomed partner at the table. Without Canada's helping hand, it would have been a lot harder for us to reach for the stars.
Wow. I'm going to have to start paying attention to this space thing. The, the only sad part about it is I'm not going to be around long enough to see, you know, commercial flights heading up there and thing, you know, in droves. Not just like one or two rich people saying, I'll give you $3 million to go to the moon. I'm talking about ordinary folks and thing, you know what I mean? Because you know, everything starts off as a rich person thing. Well, the rich people are just scouts to figure out how they could do it better to make more money. And then us poor people or ordinary people will buy it and go see it and go... <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, I mean, it's kind of like they're extending their, their system out into space, you know what I mean? But then again, what else would they do? I don't think we could create a, a you know, a whole new system, you know what I mean? Uh, when we get out to space, you know what I mean? We're either going to be dictated, dictatorial to each other, or we could just go out there and chill in peace and dig it all. Anyway, man, I'll leave a link in the description for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video with me. You know what I mean? If you do, drop a like on the video for me. Please, and please, please, please comment down below. Let me know what's going on. If you all know of any other country that's doing space exploration vibes, hit me up in the comment section because, you know, we ain't going to hear about those people unless we tell each other what's going on. You all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.